We're looking at 6.4 rational equations today, and that's on pages 341 to 351 in your text. Our curriculum outcome is to expand and demonstrate understanding of rational expressions and equations up to and including degree two numerators and denominators, including equivalent forms of expressions, operations on expressions, and solving equations, which is what we're doing today. That can be simplified to linear or quadratic equations. And our lesson objectives, to be able to solve rational equations and to be able to create rational equations based on real world situations. So when you solve the equations with fractions in the min grades of nine and 10, we always multiply both sides of the equation by a constant and that would allow you to cancel out each of the denominators. So for example, if we had a question like this, seven eighths of x minus five quarters equals a half x plus two thirds, we would choose a number to multiply each of these terms by that would get rid of that, uh, all the denominators. And then in this case, it would be 24 because all these numbers go into 24. So you'd multiply this thing by 24. You'd multiply this thing by 24. You'd multiply this thing by 24 and you'd multiply this thing by 24. And then when you're done, you would uh, simplify by canceling out the 8 and the 24 and the 4 and the 24 and the 2 and the 24 and the 3 and the 24. You'd simplify each of those um, little dividing questions. We're going to be using the same concept today. It's just that you'll be multiplying by binomials instead of just a constant. We'll be multiplying by more than just a constant, mostly binomials. And you need to compare your answers to your non-permissible values to make sure they are not extraneous solutions. So when we're done, when we're done solving this equation, Got to make sure there's no extraneous solutions. And you should always check your answers by substituting them into the original equation to make sure it verifies the equation. And that just means the left-hand side of your equation is going to equal the right-hand side. So we have 9 over y minus 3 minus 4 over y minus 6 equals 18 over y squared minus 9y plus 18. So your first step at all times is going to be that you want to uh, factor anything that isn't already factored. That would be top and bottom, because in the top, it might cancel out with a factor in the bottom at some point. So we have y squared minus 9y plus 18. So we're looking for two things that multiply to 18, but add to negative 9. And that's y minus 3 and y minus 6. Now, when we take a look at e each of our fractions, we take a look at the denominators, and we can notice that there's a y minus 3 and a y minus 6 in all of them. So I'm going to multiply each of these terms by y minus 3 and y minus 6. So I do it to the right-hand side, and I do it to both terms on the left-hand side. So now what happens is some things cancel out. The y minus 3 here and the y minus 3 here cancel out. y minus 6 and the y minus 6 cancel out. And then here, both the y minus 3 and the y minus 6 cancel out. And what I'm left with is 9 times y minus 6 minus 4 times y minus 3 <coughs> equals 18. I've gotten rid of all the denominators. I just have to expand this equation and solve. So I get 9y minus 54 minus 4y plus 12 equals 18. And I have 9y minus 4y, which is 5y. I have negative 54 plus 12, which is negative 42. If I add 42 to both sides, I get 5y equaling 60. And that means that y equals 12. I double check with my non-permissible values. I should have stated those. My non-permissible values would be these denominators. So y can't equal three and y can't equal six. And I have a y value of 12 and it doesn't equal three or six. So I am good to go. So Stella takes four hours to paint a room. It takes Jose three hours to paint the same room. How long will it take if they actually work together? So this sort of question, um, you may not know where to start, but always a good place to start is to make a table of values. So we've got a table here. We've got Stella, we've got Jose and together. And we've got the time to paint in hours, the fraction of the work done in one hour, and the fraction of the work done in T hours, which would be together. So Stella takes four hours to paint the room, Jose takes three hours to paint the room, and together we're gonna call that T, because that's the variable that we don't know. How long is it gonna take for them if they work together? So if Stella um, takes four hours to paint the room, then the fraction of work done in one hour is gonna be a quarter. She gets a quarter of the room painted in one hour. Jose would, would get a third of the room painted in one hour, and together they would get one over T painted in one hour. We don't know what that T value is yet, so we leave it as T. Now the fraction of work done in T hours when they work, actually work together is gonna be a quarter times T. And this is gonna be a third times T. And this is gonna be one over T times T, which is just one. So that means the fraction of the work done together, one over, 4 times t plus 1 over 3 times t now equals just plain old 1. 
So we now have a rational expression or a rational equation. We can solve this thing by multiplying everything by 12. So we end up getting 3t plus 4t equals 12 when I multiply everything by 12. That gives me 7t equaling 12. So t then equals 1.71 hours. And exactly that would be one hour and 42 minutes. So a train has a scheduled run of 160 kilometers between two cities in Saskatchewan. If the average speed is decreased by 16 kilometers an hour, the run will take half an hour longer. What is the average speed of the train? So here we have another table. We're going to use distance and rate and time. We know that distance equals rate times time. And so that's going to be really important when we actually do this. So in the first case, our distance traveled is 160 kilometers. The rate we're going to call R because that's what we're trying to find. We're trying to find the average speed of the train. And the time then, well, we could solve this little equation for time. It's going to be distance divided by your rate. So that's going to be 160 divided by R. Our second trip, when we decrease the speed, is still 160, it, or the distance. The rate, however, is going to be uh, 16 kilometers left, less, so it's r minus 16. And that means our time is going to be 160 over r minus 16. Now, it says if we decrease the, the speed, the time is going to take half an hour longer. So that means trip number 2 minus trip number 1 should be a difference of half an hour. So trip number two, the time for trip number two is 160 over r minus 16 minus 160 over r is going to give us a half. So once again, we're going to multiply by all the, de the denominators in order to cancel out denominators. So that means we have to multiply by r minus 16. We're going to have to multiply by r and we're going to have to multiply by two. So when we do that, when I multiply by r minus 16, r and two, the r minus 16s cancel out here. I get 160 times r times 2. For the second fraction, the r cancels out, so I still have 160 times 2 times r minus 16. And this last fraction, the half, the 2s will cancel out, and I'm going to be left with r and r minus 16. So when I multiply this out, I get 320r. I get minus... 2 times 160 is 320, so 320R plus whatever 160 times 16 is, and that is 5120. And over here, I get R squared plus 6R, sorry, minus 16R. These two things cancel each other out, 320R minus 320R, which means I can move the 5120 over to the other side, so I get 0 equaling r squared minus 16r minus 5120. Now I have a quadratic. I could try to factor that thing, or I'll just plug it into the quadratic equation. And when I plug it into the quadratic formula or the quadratic equation, I get two answers. I get r equaling negative 31.8 kilometers an hour. And the other one I get is 47.8 kilometers an hour. Now let's remember that we said r is our average speed. So we can't have an average speed that's negative 31.8 kilometers an hour. You'd never get anywhere. So that one is discarded, which means our answer is 47.8 kilometers an hour. So in summary, you will want to factor all numerators and denominators of a rational equation to see what you should multiply by in order to eliminate all fractions in the equation. Be sure to check your answers with your non-permissible values and by substituting into your original equation to make sure your, an your solution is not extraneous. And there will be times that you will need to create your own rational expression to, help, to describe sorry, a real-life situation. In these cases, a table can help you organize your information. So your assignment is on pages 348 to 351. Good luck, and we'll see you in class.